Dr. Bob here, Proactive Wellness and Injury Center, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to do a test that you'll be able to do in the privacy of your own home that I use many times with patients that have come to us. But before I do that, I want to share with you a, a little bit of the background, because over the many years that I've been in practice, we've had patients that have come to us that have been diagnosed, and they've, they've gone from doctor to doctor to doctor with no no success whatsoever, but they've they've come to us as a last resort, and they've had such conditions as migraines, headaches, uh, irritability, fatigue, um, sinusitis, high blood pressure, uh, obesity, constipation, and even epilepsy, and they they found no resolve going from various practitioners. And you know, basically what I would do, I always do an evaluation of the nerve system because the nerve system is always, always, always involved in any and every condition. However, with some additional testing that we've incorporated, we were able to help these various, these various individuals out. And that's the test I'm going to share with you. And it's called the Coca Pulse Test. Now, it was developed by an allergist many, many years ago by the name of doc, Dr. Arthur Coca. And what he found was, during his 40 years of practice, he found that there were certain foods that were actually irritating uh, the, the body in, in a way that was very unhealthy. So basically, he found foods that, that the people were eating that were healthy, and some of the foods that the people were eating were very unhealthy, despite how good it smelled to them or how, how palatable it was, you know, how good it tasted, and um, uh, how often they ate it without any apparent, you know, problems and all. It was causing, it was very unhealthy for them. And, you know, I found this in my practice as well, and it's becoming more true if I can say it that way as the time goes by, because many of the foods that we are ingesting on a regular basis are, you know, loaded with various pesticides, herbicides. They are what I call Franken foods. You know, they're not really real foods, but they're chemical concoctions that we're eating and whatnot. Anyway, with this test, what he did was he would find the pulse of the individual, and when the person ate the food, the body would go into a state of alarm. So just to clarify this, remember back in school, you learned about the fight or flight mechanism, right? So when you were in a stressful situation that could be life-threatening, your brain, you had to make the decision either to fight, to stay there and fight whatever the stressor was, or to flee from it, whatever the stressor was, i.e. The, the fight or flight. So you either stayed and fought or you fled, okay? But in either event, what would happen is that your heart rate would increase, right? Because you're ready to fight. So the, the body is uh, in this state of alarm, so the heart rate is going to increase. Anyway, getting back to the food now, it's either going to be healthy or unhealthy. So it's either going to uh, be beneficial to your body or it's going to set off an alarm in your body where the body becomes stressed i.e. so therefore your heart rate is going to increase so this is how you do this okay and, and see this is just before I get into it I have to tell you this is just a confirmation as to how fearfully and wonderfully your body is you know it's been made that way and here, when, when he, he discovered that when you put these foods into the body, it would speak to you. An alarm would go off, and it was telling you, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. This is, again, just how amazing the body is. Anyway, we'll get back to what you need to do, okay? So if you're one of those people that maybe has ongoing migraines, or if you have a, a continuous sinus infection, or if you're experiencing constipation from time to time, or you're irritable, or you're, you're even obesity. You know, if you tried all these different weight loss programs and you can't seem to lose the weight, or even if you have an individual in your family that has been diagnosed as an epileptic and he or she is having, you know, these seizures that are occurring. I'm not saying that this is the cause for all of these things, but it might very well be one of the culprits that was overlooked. And by identifying that culprit and getting rid of it, you might be able to enjoy a, a better performance of your life, right? So here's how you do the test. 
So what you're going to do first is you're going to sit down. You are going to get maybe four foods that you eat because we're creatures of habit and we eat these foods on a regular basis over and over and over again. So all you need is a little bit of, of four different types of food that you ingest on a regular basis. Now look, uh, let me give you an example. If it's an, uh, fried eggs, you don't want a fried egg because the fried egg is going to be the egg. It's going to be whatever you fry it in and however you prepare it. All right. Or you don't want a piece of um, of a buttered toast because we're talking about the bread. We're talking about toasting it. We're talking about putting butter on it. So you see what we want to do is to break the foods that the foods down into their their separate identities. So with a, with a buttered toast, you'd want to take a piece of bread. Then you'd want to take a piece of toasted bread, and then you'd want to have some butter. That's how you'd want to look at things, because they're going to alter. They're going to change their chemical composition, uh, altered by however you prepare them and what you put on. I hope I'm clear on this to you. So you want to break down the foods that you eat in their utter simplicity, okay? So you have just a, a small portion of the food that you eat. So we'll say you have four different things. Um, you have those foods and you're going to sit down now and you're going to take a nice deep breath to calm you and you're going to test your pulse after about a minute or two of sitting there right you're going to take your pulse after the minute we're not going to take it for 15 seconds and multiply by four we're not going to take it for 10 seconds and multiply by six we're going to take it for a solid 60 seconds you're going to write that that number down after you've done that, you're going to take, we'll say, um, uh, a piece of bread, whatever bread it is you eat, and you're going to take a small bit of it. You're going to put it in your mouth, and you're going to chew it. Now, you're not going to swallow it, but you're going to chew it to the point where you can taste it for about 30 seconds. After 30 seconds with the food still in your mouth, with, this, with the piece of bread still in your mouth, you're going to take your pulse again. And you're going to take that pulse with the piece of bread in your mouth for 60 seconds. Not the 15 by 4 or the 10 times 6. You're going to take it because the pulse may increase over this time. So you want an empirical number. You want the fact, okay? So you're going to take it for 60 seconds. You're going to write it down. Then you're going to spit the piece of bread out. You're not going to swallow it or whatever it is. And then you're going to rinse your mouth out with some water. And you're going to start all over again. You're going to take your pulse and wait till it gets back to whatever it was in the beginning. If it was 80, you're going to wait till it goes to 80. If when you first started out it was 76, you're going to wait till it gets back to 76. If it was 90, you're going to wait till it gets back to 90. Whatever that number is, you're going to wait till it gets back to that original starting number. Then you're going to take the next piece of food. Maybe it's a, a strawberry, right? A piece of strawberry. You're going to put it in your mouth. You're going to chew it up. You're not going to swallow it. You're going to wait for about 30 seconds. You can taste it now. And then you're going to take your pulse again. And you're going to write it down. So I hope you have the idea here. That's how you're going to test these foods to see if your body has a sensitivity to those foods. Because if it does, it could be creating the problem that you're experiencing. See, because we put this food in our body each and every day as creatures of habit. And it may take hours before the body for this clinical manifestation, for the headache, for the, for the congestion, for the bloating, for the, uh, for the constipation, for the irritability, for the obesity, for all of these things to show up because it has to be digested and broken down by the body, and it's going to require some time. But we get back to the results now. So you've written down these numbers. So we'll say that you started out at 80, and then when you put the bread in there, it went up to 86. When you put the blueberry in, it went to 92. When you put the... Um, the, peat, the pat of butter in your mouth, a little bit of butter, it stayed at 82. So you see those variables. If your pulse increases by four or more, then you know that your body it has it's an unhealthy response 
to your body by putting these foods into them. Even if it's uh, only an 86, it's unhealthy, whatever that food is, how innocuous it may have been to you in times past. And you're scratching your head and going, are you kidding me? A blueberry is bad for me or a piece of bread is bad? Your body is speaking to you and saying, yes, it is. The higher the number from the starting point, the further away from the 80 pulse it is, that means the more serious or the more unhealthy that food is. And it's something that I would recommend you discontinue eating for the benefit of your health and longevity. You want to quit doing that food. I don't care. You shouldn't care how, how good it tastes to you or how, how, um, how pleasant it smells or how hungry it makes you, you don't want to put it into your body because by doing so, it's causing your body harm, okay? It's really simple. That's all you need to do. And now it may take you, it's going to take you some time to do this. And I might suggest if you're seriously going to do this test in your home, maybe you do it, you limit it to three, maybe four food items at a time. So you don't get tired doing it and because you've got other things to do through the day. But keep your list and see what foods you are, your body is sensitive to and how sensitive your body is to that particular food and start to eliminate it from your everyday eating, you know, uh, from your menus or your eating habits. Do that and I promise you, you're going to have better days ahead. You're going to be able to get closer to enjoying the best performance of your life. And that's exactly what you want to do. Look, uh, thank you for allowing me to share this information with you. I know it's going to be a benefit to those of you who uh, take this, you know, who incorporate it and, and see. And you can do it on your kids, do it on your husband, do it on your wife, whatever. But you may, may be uh, quite surprised at uh, some of these foods and how damaging they are to your body. Okay? So again, I want to thank you for allowing me to share this information with you. And until the next video, and as always, God bless.